you guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm just in the mood to, I'm in the mood to color, bitch. As you can see, I just got these coloring books actually for my girlfriend and we were coloring in them the other day. I wanna finish my masterpiece. This one's a little fucked up. I got these from Walmart, if you're curious. I thought I'd come in here today, you know, spark a little bold and just, I kind of really just wanted to make this video kind of, I don't want to say my coming out story, but like just my process into figuring out who I really was, my sexuality, you know what I'm saying? You know, I got the pride, I got the pride hat on. It's almost pride month. I'm just going to go ahead and load this bowl roll fast. But yeah, I don't really have like this long drawn out story or like this aha moment where I was like, bitch, I'm gay. Like, and I still don't really know exactly like what my sexuality is. Like, I don't know. I definitely think I'm bi or pan. I don't really care for the labels of it all. It's very much you like what you like and it is what it is. I just wanna have a space where I can just be open about my experiences. Me just figuring out how to be adult, an adult, especially in this time. Before I continue with this video, I wanna tell you about this amazing app I just found. This is honestly the best app for my single gals out there. And of course I joined in as a viewer just to get the inside scoop, okay? So y'all should definitely go click the link in my description and go give me a follow at the Mackenzie Drake. So the app is called Riz and it's basically like dating in the public eye and you can put yourself out there or you can be a viewer like me and just really get the tea. And y'all might be like, oh, eavesdropping on people's conversations? Oh no, but girl, this is so entertaining and they're all doing it willingly, so why not go do it? I've had this app for a while now and it's super easy to navigate and I just love how you can just go on there, see people's shows, how they communicate and how they truly interact. Really interesting in this day and age. This is definitely the next big thing, so y'all better go check out Riz and go see who I'm following, who you can follow, and let's just be besties on there. You can browse shows between people and basically get the inside scoop on any on there which is just wild so go get your friends on there let's get the tea yours truly is recommending this so make sure y'all go click the link down below and claim your profile in the next 24 hours so that you can get your spot you can make friends make lovers you can do whatever you want on that app so make sure y'all go check it out it's so fun i mean who doesn't love to be nosy every every so often okay but yeah y'all go check out riz link down below and let's just continue on with the video but anyways, I just want to get into my story and coloring this amazing coloring book. So I'm first going to take a little hit out of the bowl, okay? And we're going to get this going. Cheers! Um, if you garden, go ahead, get your pen, get your get your blizzy, get your, get your bowl. Let's do this together. Get your coloring book. But yeah, get your little fingers ready to comment. I want this to be a very open conversation. So... Let's do this thing. I would roll a blizz, but we really don't have um, a lot of the ganj left. So I'm just gonna have a little bowl. This is so cute. Do y'all like this? Okay, th this is hella dirty, but this is from Hemperco and it's so cute. It's a cauldron and I don't know if you can tell, but there's a face on the side. So cute, so cute. Hey, seeing stars shout out to emma tamsin hill all body I remember when i got this sweatshirt Ooh, but let's just get to coloring so i only have these colored pencils these are erasable colored pencils but i also have this is like my pen pouch from like school i love this thing but i have extra like colored pencils in here some markers a fan brush i'm already feeling that hit like oh, man. coloring is just so soothing like I love it. I also love painting. I definitely, I still have paint. Um, I just, I need to get a canvas. So this might be like a new series, Craft with Kenzie. Cause it's so fun to have a little hobby like this, whether it's coloring, painting, crocheting, whatever the fuck, um, making clothes. Like if, if you don't have something that's creative and artistic and it's not a hobby, you definitely should get one. Like, it just feels so good to master something like that. Okay, the candle right here is a really bad idea. I just wanted to show the candle. <laughs> how about, how about this? <laughs> I, like, in middle school, um, I used to always have, like, 
you know, the thread string for like friendship bracelets, whatever. And I just remember like a couple summers, I would literally just be in my room like getting the bracelets, you know, put the tape with the, with the strings and just, you know, that makes me want to get it again because like, I just love doing that shit. I might start a new page, just, oh my God. Like, I can't find the color I use. Gosh, and then a couple days ago, I just realized my 10 year YouTube anniversary. It's May 29th, isn't that insane? Like, that's just crazy to me. I can't believe I've been really sitting here making content for a straight 10 years in this bitch. So I would really appreciate it. Come back to my channel on May 29th. I'm gonna have a really cute video posted. And yeah, I just want to celebrate what a milestone. Like it's just, I've thought of times like this. I always knew I was going to continue doing YouTube. But like once I started doing it, I was like, yeah, there's no way I'm going to stop doing this. Like, what do you mean? But wow, now that we're really here, I'm like, wow, I did that shit. Come on. I'm going to start it off with like middle school, you know, Growing up, I was a very um, shy, introverted, y'all see me, y'all see me. I mean, if you've been watching my channel for a long time, I feel like you would be able to tell from my videos that I'm just a to myself individual. You know what I'm saying? Like the jump from middle school to high school was very big for me, but also it didn't feel big, if that makes any sense. Like now that I'm watching the videos back, I'm like, okay, in that moment, it didn't feel like I changed that much, but I did. Like middle school me was so different from high school me, but also like I was still the same, if that makes sense. It's just wild talking about middle school me, like it's not yesterday, like it literally still feels like it was yesterday. Like it, it literally still feels like it was yesterday. Like, me in middle school, you know, I never talked to nobody. I feel like I probably like, yeah, I was just not, boys scared me, you know, I I didn't know who I was at the time and it just, I was avoiding it. And then I started YouTube literally at 13 and I didn't start like actively posting like consistently until like 2014, 2015 maybe, but like whenever I say I put my whole headspace into this platform, I did. Like I really put my whole fucking left and right foot into this fucking app and I would never take that back. I'm really proud of myself for just, ooh, okay. I think I'm gonna do, I'm just such a symmetrical bitch and I want everything to be like symmetrical, but I'm like, I should just color it like how I want to, like whatever, just make it abstract. But I'm such a symmetrical bitch. I'm like, I need to make it all the same. But like, bitch, you're coloring in a coloring book. Um, yeah, I, you know, I grew up with like, you know, my siblings talking, you know, to guys, girls, whatever, what, what may have you, okay? And growing up in my house, like, and honestly growing up, my siblings, you know, went through a lot just mentally growing up. All of them, honestly, me too. Like we all mentally went through a lot. And I know, I feel like every time I do talk about like my life, I always start talking about like, you know, my childhood and stuff, but like your upbringing, your upbringing just has such a impact on how you are as an adult. And I don't care, like it's really, it's really crazy, of course. Y'all, we're probably all adults here. I don't know how much of my audience, you know, we all grew up together. Like we're multitasking of talking while coloring is actually getting me. Like I did not think this was going to be hard, but actually coloring and speaking at the same time is a lot harder than I, than I was guessing. I don't even know when I think about like gay awakening or even like my girlfriends asked me, she's like, so like, did you have like celebrity crushes like growing up? Like when did you know like you were gay? I really don't, I don't know if that makes any sense. Like somewhat of an attraction, but in my mind, I didn't even let myself think it just because of my environment. And that's what's tough. Like I try to think back on how I was really feeling during those like 
changing times you know when you're growing up middle school those middle years like i try to think about it and i'm like i don't really know how i truly felt like i didn't feel like there was any space for me to feel you know what i mean and of course i did feel i felt a lot you know but i i masked the fuck out of it and all i knew was to just you know wallow in it and i'm i'm not gonna hold you i had an amazing childhood i, I love my family but you know, middle school was very rough for me. Like I was definitely feeling a lot of heavy feelings, but I didn't know what the fuck to do with them. And luckily I channeled it into something healthy for me rather than something detrimental. Hyper fixation on it. Like, I don't know how I would have coped whenever I was younger, like just with my own thoughts and my own feelings. And you know, sometimes it's hard whenever your whole family, you know, even your siblings, your parents get caught up in the world, you know? And of course that can happen. And I definitely get that more now as I'm an adult, you know? But at that time, you know, I, I just, I didn't get it. You know, we're kids. So y'all are like, okay, like, so when did you know? Like, when did you know? I feel like it was this one TV series and I can't remember the name for the life of me. I hope I find the series, but like, it was like vampires. It was, it was on really late at night on cable. I don't even remember what channel. It wasn't mystery. It wasn't mystery. It was vampires. I remember they were like sirens. They were sirens. I hope someone gets what I'm saying right now. And if you remember the show, I hope I do, but. Yeah, I feel like that's where I knew. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And then of course came technology. I, I don't know when y'all got your phone. My parents gave me a phone at in fourth grade and that's whenever my sister got her phone. And then my brother, who's a lot of people don't really know I have a brother because I just never really talked about it much just because, you know, whenever I was in the house, he already like left the house by the time I feel like I was on YouTube long enough to like talk about things and just like, I don't know. Uh, I How old is he? But y'all know I'm an auntie and I need to go see my niece. I love you so much, big bro, okay? Like, I don't wanna get on here and like go super specific. I'm not gonna sit here and talk on my siblings experiences, but it's so hard not to whenever I'm talking about mine cause it's just had such an impact on me, you know? and an impact on all of us, you know, like, especially whenever you're in a household with six people, yeah, you got four kids, two parents, five kids, six kids, even three kids. It can, you know, uh, there's a lot going on in that household. Ugh, I just don't even want to talk about it, but like I do. It's just so hard to talk about it sometimes. I just, I just feel like this moment of vulnerability is needed and I've, I've made the choice to be so vulnerable about things in the past, but also not at the same time. Basically we've all, all my siblings, my older siblings, we all struggled with some like identity types of issues growing up just when it, in terms of sexuality and stuff like that. And especially like in a religious household. Um, it's just, you know, it's different. I don't know, I just feel like I would have like turned out to be a different person if I just had a little bit more one-on-one -on -one support, you know? And I really, I really recognized a lot of things about myself going into college that I did not want to recognize, like, Anyways, how does this go into queerness and gayness and bisexuality? Well, I think it starts, so like I said, in fourth grade, I got a phone. So I had Instagram, I've had my Instagram and my Snapchat account since fourth grade, y'all. Like literally the exact same account, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I don't know how many of y'all can relate, but like being on the phone at such an early age, it's crazy. Like in fourth grade and in fifth grade, I didn't even, I knew I like, you know, it's, it's for, you know, when you need entertainment, you know, you need to put it down, whatever. Like, I remember I had it just to, you know, text my parents like, oh, I, I made it to school because I would walk to school across the street. So, you know, I'd leave it in my backpack. You know, I wouldn't really be on, on it like that, you know. Like in middle school, of course, I started 
watching YouTube and everything like that. That's really where my love for YouTube like really grew was just watching it endlessly. I get into YouTube and then we go to Google searching things and this kind of led me into, um, um, I don't know if I would say porn addiction. I don't, I don't really think that I was addicted to porn. Like I really don't. First, honestly, whenever I started to become of age and I lost my virginity, you know, I didn't really watch porn. I was like, <laughs> but yeah, like in middle school and high school, I didn't date nobody. I honestly, I had crushes, you know, here and there, even like in middle school, like in elementary school, I remember crushes, but they were never like on girls until like, yeah, like, you know, I didn't let myself like even get to that point, you know? And it's kind of sad thinking of it, but I don't even know how else to do it. I feel like my subconscious was like, bitch, you know you're gay. Like, just like, just like erase that part of your amygdala today and every other day after that, okay? And I would always like low-key fantasize about shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, because... <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I would have these little fantasized moments, but I would replace it, oh, with like porn. Uh, why is it such a taboo thing, like porn? Like, I mean, it's definitely not a taboo thing, but I've really not talked about it on my channel before. Like I, would, I was watching lesbian porn. Like I wasn't watching, I wasn't watching no fucking straight shit. Like I was not doing that. And that was as early as I can remember it. Um, like middle school, I was not watching, no. <laughs> it was just such like this secret in my mind. Like, <laughs> like, okay, girl, go crazy, go crazy. With the girls kissing girls and the YouTube search, like, okay, but. And in high school, me and my friends weren't talking about that. Not only that, but. A lot of my friends I've had have come through, have come from similar backgrounds. We were living it up, bitch. I'm so happy I didn't date in high school and stuff like that. I mean, but it is wild because now I'm in like my first relationship and I'm 21 and I'm like, okay, how would I act in relationships if I already got into one in high school? You know what I'm saying? You're gonna learn either way, but also like in high school, those are such, those are such forming years and like, it felt so much easier in my mind to just block it off. And especially with everything going on around me and basically whenever I'm saying everything going on around me, it's just basically like, oh, like negative reaction, you know? Like both of my older siblings, you know, came out to my parents and I just, I can't do it. Like I'm, what's the point for real? That's where I'm at. Like, and I feel like every time when we're talking about, oh, you're gay now or whatever, it's always like, do your parents know? And it's like, what, why does it have to be this like whole thing? Like it really shouldn't matter. Like, of course, you know, it shouldn't matter. Like I'm already saying it, oh, it shouldn't matter. You should be able to just bring your girlfriend home and it be all A and okay. You know what I mean? But sometimes it's just not like that. It's like each time I did see it in the past, it was just, not a good reaction. And I'ma just leave it at that. Like, especially in a religious household, it's just, it's a whole nother feeling of, um, like guilt and just like confusion and just, yeah. Like the religious trauma sometimes is a lot. And I'm not gonna sit here and talk about religious trauma. Like, I'm not religious because, you know, every single time I'm like, oh my God, I'm literally about to crash out. Like, I can't do this anymore. You know, I pray. I pray a lot, you know, and, and honestly, I don't even know if I'm a Christian, what the fuck I am. I'm very big on just, you know, God and a higher power in general. It's just, it's different. And when I say we were in the church, we were in the church, like, you know, as early as I remember it, we were at the VBSs and helping out and the candle and you light it and it's a long ass stick. <laughs> we went from like a traditional church to a more like non-denom, 
we went from more like a traditional church to a non-denominational one. Just the difference there is definitely, definitely wild. Like going from like a smaller church to a more bigger church. Like, you know, I grew up and my brother loved, you know, youth and so did my sister. I did too. I mean, I, w I really didn't do youth because I was in cheer and stuff like that, but every weekend we were helping with kids. Even in Kentucky, we would go to VBS every, you know, every year we were always in it. My parents were always helping and we would always volunteer. And you know what, looking back, I feel like it really did like kind of mold me like into feeling just more open to helping people, of course. Like, yeah, I feel like it shows a lot when, you know, you're around someone who's gr grown up in the church and someone who hasn't, like, regardless of how they feel now, you know what I mean? Like, you know, even if you meet someone and they grew up in the church, but now they don't, you know, they're not religious, like, you can still tell, like, that shit will mold you, that, that shit, like... All in all, I just wasn't comfortable, honestly, talking about myself, like, at all. You know what I mean? Like, and most of the time in my household, like every time I was the topic, it was just not, you know, it was about me either like cleaning or just like joking around or it was just, you know, not, you know, yeah. Of course, me and my relationship with my parents, like I wouldn't take that. I'm never gonna take that for granted, you know? But I can still sit here and like really reflect on it and be like, you know, how did it, how did this affect me? Cheers, number three. Literally we're all like, I, this video popped up on my timeline and it was like the most, um, <laughs> the zodiac signs that are most likely to be narcissists. And it said literally me and my sister's zodiac signs and my mom. So just imagine that. So we got, my sister's an Aquarius, I'm a Gemini. My um, older sister's a Leo. And then my mom's an Aries. We got the fire and the fire, we got the air. It's just like a whole lot of, you know what I'm saying? And my dad's a Sagittarius. And you know, I don't heavily believe in, you know, Zodiac super like to be studying it, but like Zodiac, you can't sit here and lie that people really be their zodiacs, like dead fucking ass. Like it's scary. It's like, holy shit. Like you're literally the zodiac sign. Uh, but like, I could not agree with Gemini either. Like in my past, I've been a very two-faced ass bitch and I can, I can agree with that. And even now it's like kind of a journey of just trying to figure yourself out in your head but you just can't. So like, you know something, but you're just, I don't even know. My fellow Geminis, you know what I mean? Gemini season, y'all. I'm about to be 22. I'm about to be 22 fucking years old. I think when I was younger, I just had this over, I just always had a fear of just, I don't know, like being on the bad side of my family. Like, uh, I don't even know. Now that I'm just talking about it, my mind just goes scrambled. But whenever I'm sitting in silence, I'm like, I can just think of things so perfectly. Like, that's what gets me. That's what really gets me. But growing up, I just had an issue speaking in general. Like, I really did not let my emotions get to me at all. Even my parents have said that I was a very chill baby. Like, I slept throughout the night, no problem. You know, I wouldn't really cry. And I'm like, damn, like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Like, I'm just like, not there or something. Like, I just gotta get through this shit, you know? And it's like, where did I adopt this mentality of just like bullshitting my way through shit? Like, no, it's okay to take a step back, slow down and be like, is this what I wanna do right now? But I just did not have this sense of self at all. I was like, this is what's happening to me. Everything's just happening to me. Everything's just happening to me. Everything's just going for me, honestly. And even whenever it comes to YouTube, it just doesn't feel like, you know, of course I've worked hard to get here every night editing, but it's never felt like work, you know? And that's what I love, you know, of course that's what everyone strives for, to, you know, find what they want to do and, you know, when you love what you do, it's not, it's not work. It's 
you just doing what you do, you know? Yeah, I was just a very to myself person and still am. Like I, I in my past, like I didn't open up heavily with the people around me, even my friends, like all of, a lot of the friends in my life until college were very surface level. Like at the end of the day, the friendships were still surface level and that's not okay. And I even, had some surface level friendships in college too. Like it's, I don't know, it's tough whenever, I'm just such an empathetic person, you know, I'm like, I, I believe everyone around me has the best intentions, but I learned very quick in college that that's not true. Like that's just like how my mindset was before I like prioritized myself. I was like, just letting things happen to me and just not, standing on business and just fucking around and just, you know what? I like your vibe. Let's just, you know, fuck around. Just, I don't know, just be friends to be friends. But it's like, no, like surface level friendships, bitch. Of course, I, I believe, I definitely do that. There's a friend for different types of things. You know what I mean? There's a friend for this. There's but honestly, I feel like I more like to strive for close friends in general that you can just be completely honest with, you know, I don't know. I, I just feel like it's crazy how us as a society, we're like, oh, classifying people for different things. You know what I mean? I never really thought about it like that, but that is wild. It's like, oh, that's my party friend. Oh, that's my drink friend. Oh, that's my, that's my smoke friend. Like, whoa, like, I don't know. I don't know, I guess maybe I just haven't had friends like that to understand. I don't like a lot of people in my circle. Like I don't, for sure. Like in middle school, I was low key friend hopping. Like <laughs> for what? I don't know, I, I, I really don't know. I had this instance with this one girl and I don't even remember the entire thing, but we had a class together. We did this like dance video. I don't know, girl, if you're watching this, like, how are you doing? <laughs> like what happened because I only remember I think she had my Instagram account and she like posted these texts or something like I don't even remember now but like I remember that happened in middle school um, I've had my good couple of friend groups like every now and then you know what I mean but anyways I just yeah moral of the story whenever I was younger I just didn't feel open to talking about things. Oh, I've been filming for an hour. I don't even know if any of this is making sense, but yeah, anyways, I feel like Maddie knew who she was from a young age. And then, you know, I get to college and then, you know, I already, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't actively searching to be like, oh my gosh, like, let me talk to a girl. Let me, let me experiment. Let me see what I am. You know what I mean? I didn't actively like, try to do that i like really went deep into this like low-key sex addiction like i i was just ripping and running and going crazy on tinder and it was a time for sure and i've told so many stories probably on youtube that i don't want people to know and they're probably still up like <laughs> it's really funny because I feel like in high school and in middle school, I didn't perceive myself at all. So I was like, not scared of people perceiving me. And then like, I got to college and that's when I truly felt like the meanness from people. And I truly felt like jealousy. And I truly felt like, you know what I mean? Cause whenever I was in middle school, high school, like we all knew each other. So we basically grew up together. So like my, me being a YouTuber wasn't like a, like a, it was a steady growth. You know what I mean? And then I went to college and everyone basically just assumed like, oh, you know what I mean? Like, but also in college, I didn't even have, I still don't even know how people perceive me. Like, I don't even know what, what that means. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like I'm just really bad at social cues. Like, People will really talk shit. They would really talk shit to my face and I'd be like, okay, like, I'm sorry, but that's called protecting your peace. Like, 
literally, I feel like I've just always been such a grounded person. Like nothing's gonna make me raise my voice. I don't give a fuck. Nothing is gonna make me get mad. And that's what, that's, that's truly what my worth is. I just want a color, I just want a color. I was really struggling to put my camera back up on a tripod, so we're just gonna have to up close and personal like this, okay? And I completely lost my train of thought, of course. <laughs> Start rapidly dating men, of course, which is completely terrible. Um, hookup culture is completely dead, and I'm sorry, especially if you're young right now and I'm not saying that it's gone. That's not what I mean by dead, but like it needs to be dead. Like I was like, fuck it, you know, let me try it. And bitch, it's not something to fuck with. Like that's your body sitting here, putting your body through antibiotics, whatever the fuck have you that comes with having lots and lots of intercourse. Um, unprotected yeah i still still was too nervous i was still like no like a girl what are you talking about a girl i could never be with a girl and then i meet miss jada Wada. just made me feel very comfortable with myself and we've always made each other feel comfortable and even then like of course in high school and in middle school my biggest crushes ever were Dean Winchester off of Supernatural and like The Weeknd, bitch. Like I knew that I did like men too, but also like, you know, so, you know, a little bit of bisexuality. I just, that was like the first time in my life where I was like, you know what? It just felt so good to just be really comfortable with somebody, you know, like just to be able to talk and I should have known sooner or, you know, like, I mean, if if I am truly this, then like, why wouldn't I have, you know, done something earlier, liked girls earlier, or, you know, yeah, actually had attraction whenever I was younger. And, you know, being with someone now that both such just our own beings, like, I it doesn't even feel like, oh, I'm in a gay relationship or, oh, like, and then you have to deal with things like, oh, being in public or, you know, or yeah, I do find like, it is a lot easier to just like, you know, it is a lot easier to just not, you know, have PDA or just not even hold your partner's hand. But it's like, wait, like we're, this is my girlfriend. Like I love her and you know, people are just, People are mean as fuck. And we've definitely had some like instances like that, whether it's like at the bar or even like at a restaurant or just like weird stares or, you know, and it's just like, how can people be filled with so much hate? Like, you know, can we talk about the fucking Cassie video? It was literally like, literally made me tear up. Like that shit is so fucking sad. That shit's probably happening all over Hollywood. It's uh, That shit's happening everywhere, domestic violence, but <sighs> down the street, bitch. And especially in being in a relationship now, like it's just wild actually like, I don't know. It's not like being told about myself, but like, I feel like that was one of the main things that was like hard to work through with communication was just like, me not taking everything personally because like, you know, my whole life, like, I don't like answering questions. I don't, you know, like people aren't asking me questions. Like, bitch, I don't know. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then you get in a relationship and this person's interested in you and they want to know about you and you're just like, no. But yeah, that's basically my coming out story in my pride hat. And on TikTok, the fucking, the man that did the speech at the graduation, like that felt so fake. Like, don't they have to approve speeches? Like, was that approved by the board for him to say that at graduation? Like, I just really don't, that speech was just insane. Like, who do you think you are? And we got, like, I would be so livid if I was sitting there. Finally going to see Mariah the Scientist next week. 
And honestly, at this point, we were talking about it last night. And I was like, we're not even excited for it at this point because to postpone it two months is wild. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like I am excited for it, but, and I need to get an outfit, but it's literally already what? It's already Saturday and it's next Wednesday. Just pretty crazy being a Gemini out here. And not only a Gemini, but a, an avoidant. I don't know, sometimes it feels so hard for me to like talk about things how I used to. Like, I feel like I, I don't know. I feel like there's nothing to talk about, Tommy. Like, I'm done talking. If there's any graduates watching, congratulations. Y'all like, you know, have a coming out story. You came out to somebody. Just let me know your experience down below, all my gay allies out there, my allies. Um, I feel like I've just kind of had a fear of like talking about it, which is like just so dumb. Like I shouldn't be afraid to speak on something like this. Like it's just, this is my life. Yeah, but I mean, like, if I want to speak on something, I can speak on something. I feel like I can have this fear of just, like, yeah, people perceiving me or, like, yeah, being put in a box because I'm, like, I'm not, I'm not one thing, to be honest with you. Like, and that's not what my channel's about. That's not what it's about. So, I mean, if I sit here and I go outside of the box and it's not even a fucking box, bitch, it's a fucking... Bitch, the, the world is our oyster now. So there's no, there ain't no box, bitch. And if people don't fuck with it, people don't fuck with it. Like, that's just how it is. Like, I'm growing and evolving into who I truly am. I'm gonna talk about like how different social media treats you just depending on your looks. And I know that that's already such a huge thing. Like BBL culture, everything like, you know, of course, even in real life, people are gonna judge you just by your looks, period, okay? So of course, in social media, that's being done as well, you know? Nothing, not a new topic, but really wild, because now I'm like actually experiencing it. And it happened kind of whenever I gained weight before I went to college, but like, I mean, it's always happened. Like, no matter what, my whole time, the whole time I've been on social media, people are calling me bigger, you know, you, you, you need to stop eating, go to the gym, whatever the fuck, you know, it's it's been there. But for a while there, more specifically on TikTok, like whenever I was in college, like I really wouldn't get comments like that. Like definitely whenever my videos would go viral, yes, yes. When my videos would go viral, yeah. But even now, like, my videos won't go viral, but I'll still have some like random profiles like, oh, you fat bitch, get in the gym. But it's just funny to see the difference. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not letting it affect me or anything like that, but it's just funny. It's like y'all bitches, <laughs> it is probably, it's probably men. Who the fuck knows who's doing it? But it's like, y'all are funny. Like, like a person's outward appearance, you really don't know what's going on inside. You really don't know what's really up with people. Someone could be literally so fit looking and they could be going through it physically. You know what I'm saying? So to sit here and comment on anyone's appearance is just wild to me. Like I've never done that my years on. So what is your issue? Like <sighs> trolls are just funny, but I feel like I've never really sat back and realized the impact being on social media for so long and putting my whole life out there type shit. Like I never really thought I put my whole life out there, but I really did. You know, I put my family on here. I, I you know, talked about a lot of things. So it's really interesting to see, you know, I don't know, because for so many years, I was just so in it by myself. You know, I was like, no one's gonna help me. Like, I'm I'm in it, you know? Like, the whole rediscovery of yourself once you actually, like, become older, like, it's something else. Like, and I mean, it's everyone's first life. Like, we're all growing and evolving, and you're still growing and evolving when you're older. Like, it's, it's really wild out here. I feel it's so important to truly know your worth. Like 
if it takes you having to sit down and write down the good things about yourself, because like, if you don't see your worth and if you don't see what you got and what you can bring to the table and you are the table, bitch, like someone could literally just come in, like the people around you, even the strangers around you will see your worth and your potential before you do. Every time, like, you know, we're such observant, we're such a, we're such an observant species. Like everyone's going to see the potential before you actually see it. So even the small things like talking down on yourself, like what you speak into the world. Like I truly, truly definitely more now, like ever since I've grown up, I've really learned the power of just like words in general. Like they, they mean so much, you know, and I went to a period whenever I was growing up that I was just, you know, saying whatever the fuck or really talking down on myself, you know, that, that, um, what's the word? Like that de demeaning, that, what is it called? Y'all know what I mean. I'm about to remember it later, but even just watching old YouTube videos, cause I started editing like my 10 year anniversary video and I was like, oh my God, but I just watched some old clips and I'd just randomly be saying the most fucked shit. I'd be like, oh, I'm so like, I don't even know. Like, I feel like we all go through that stage of life and that's just not okay because I soon started to believe it. And now I'm older and I'm like trying to get out of this mindset. Like you are not this like ability to finish a task, I guess. Like that does, doesn't define you. Your looks, your weight doesn't define you, all of these things. And it's just a lot to get back from that mindset. And, you know, especially with people around you, like agreeing, you know, or people around you putting the thoughts in your head already. Like, oh, you're lazy. Oh, you're always this. You're always that. You're always whatever like especially when you're younger like hearing words like that it's already like you're already feeling inadequate and when you're a child especially in a middle school like feeling like i said earlier feelings of inadequacy can feel so heavy and just detrimental what did i honestly go through to feel so hurt you know but it's like just years of you know, just negativeness, you know, just years of just shitting on ourselves, you know? especially whenever the outcome is the complete opposite. Like you're going through with it and you feel success in yourself and you're like, I'm solid. Like, I know I did this right. This is how I feel. You know what I mean? And then someone feels a different way or has a negative, you know, perspective on it. You don't want that to literally, I lost my whole train of thought. Oh my God. This is so soothing. I feel like we're in a therapy session. Like what you think, what you, you know, what you say, it, it so quickly can become your reality. I feel like that's what I've, I've struggled with before. Like, you know what, I'ma just say something because you know, they're expecting an answer or, you know, I'm gonna just say something real quick to respond. And like, that's not how it should be. Like we should be engaging with people and having conversations for more than just a response. You know, it's more than that. It's, it's a connection. It's a, I don't even know what word I'm trying to go for here, but it's so much more than that surface level, you know? And I feel like in life, especially if you aren't heard when you're growing up, if you don't feel heard, it's so easy to just want to be on that side of the convo where you're just telling, telling, telling and just getting your point across and always like relating yourself. And it's just wild whenever like you go through that realization because everything's in the little things, like everything, every day. At the end of the day, life should be so much more than just making money. I don't know what that mean, but we loved the little quotes. Yep, just like I was saying, and this is really the perfect quote for what I've been talking about. This is wild. 
Um, it was, it's literally right beside the coloring. It says, words have power. Words can light fires in the minds of men. Words can wring tears from the hardest hearts. Mm. Patrick Rothfuss. That's good. They really do have power. Uh, I really do appreciate y'all chatting with me. I know y'all aren't right with me. I feel definitely much more solid and secure in myself and happy than before. Like I was just putting up a mask. It felt so much easier to just my insecurities and put it into others. And whether that's just distracting myself with men, addictions, whatever it was like, this is so adorable. A masterpiece. I love a good yap session. I do like a baking while baked video. I feel like that would be really funny. I just wanna be good. Up tours. Ah! And I'm sick of TikTok banning me from live. I'm really sick of it. Don't worry about a thing. I cut myself on the razor. I don't know how I got that deep. Okay, let me say my goodbye bong hits. Oh God. <laughs> Oh, you're funny. I love you guys so much. Peace out, Girl Scout. Mm.